Who's in there? Both waste gunners, huh? The docks are working on them now. But one's pretty bad. Now, you guys, it's Bob Wallace, co-pilot. They slammed one through the cockpit, tore into Wally below his knee. Bulletproof glass. Well, Sergeant, guess you live right. Yes, the bombardiers with their first aid kits had plenty of work today, crawling back through the bomb bays, trying to keep a steady hand in the rough going. Many of your pals left you that day. face? Well, you just did. Yeah, while the gang at the base carries on, you can take it easy for a while. How are they biting, Sarge? Nice fat pike, hmm? This one's been stretched a little. We drop in on Lieutenant Bob Wallace to see how he's doing. How are you feeling? Great, I'll be out of here in a couple of weeks. Oh, Miss O'Neill, it's Captain Gable. How do you do, Captain Gable? How do you do, Miss O'Neill? Wally, I never got a chance to ask you. Uh, uh, tell me just ha what happened when you got hit. Well, we'd uh, left the target and we were on our way home. We got to the coast and we had our guns stowed away. A couple of FWs snuck up on us and gave us a good burst. Oh, I see. You had your gun stowed away, eh? That's right. That was a little early, wasn't it? It certainly was. Uh, it's not a very good idea to relax over here until you get back to your own base. Is that right? That's right. Well, go ahead. Then then what happened? Well, we, uh, after I got hit, I climbed down out of the uh, pilot's compartment and uh, got the top turret gunner to help me down in the bomb bay. He gave me some first aid, put a tourniquet on my leg, and took a good, good job of it. Well, that's fine. I guess you think it's a good idea for these combat crews to have first aid training then, is that right? I sure do. Yeah. So, Wally, what do you think of the B-17s? Your uh, instruments, your guns, and all the rest of the equipment they're giving you to fight this war with? It's the best equipment in the world. That's good. Say, I hear you got your Purple Heart, too. Yes, Colonel Kennel was in the other day and gave it to me. I was more nervous than when those FWs were diving on us. 
Well, outside of that, are they treating you all right around here? Did you hear that, Miss O'Neill? Wally's doing okay. Back at the base, they repair your ships, too. The busiest legs in the outfit belong to Major Ace Akins, the S-4. This airplane's got to fly in the morning. It's going to be ready. Oh, Major, I don't know, sir. Well, let's have no ceremony. Let's get the fans turning. Keep the fans turning. The slogan of the ground crew. They work hard, these boys. They work 90 hours straight without sleep. But your ship is their baby. And she's got to fly. And if you need to repair a few thoughts, Sunday's always a nice day for it, if there's no raid scheduled. What do you know, Ken? This church was built 900 years ago. Over at the hospital, Father O'Connor celebrates the Mass. The boys receive Holy Communion. Here's Pete Provenzale. He's leaving the hospital tomorrow. for your pleasure by the Red Cross. A great place here. Sleep, eat, or what have you. Hey! Not on your life, Clark. None of that here. Oh, but look, ours. Just a few shots. Oh, we're here for a rest. Right, you guys? Right. All right. Well, all right, then. How's this? I'll follow him around with a silent camera for one day. They won't have to say a word. Good deal? Good deal. English Surrey with a fringe on top. 
Oh, nice friend. Carry you to the old swimming hole. your flaps and slide in. Now let's see what the boys back at the base are doing. Why, they're getting a few laughs too. We'll let the man who's handing them out tell you about it. Hello everybody, this is Bob somewhere in good old Jolly Hope laying a few eggs for the boys that really know how to lay them. Yes, sir, this is one of the happier cow pastures that we worked in over there in England. And look who's dancing. <laughs> you know, I used to dance with Fred Astaire when we couldn't get girls. And right here you see Jack Pepper, which was here through the courtesy of his draft board. This picture's a little dark, I understand, but after we were there a couple of weeks, we got a little braver and we started to work with the lights on. This is really a great, great crowd out there tonight. And I understand Rhett Butler is on the fringe of the crowd. They tell me that uh, they stopped him from flying in those B-17s. They claimed his ears held the plane back. Nice little scene. Shows Pepper trying to get his expense money. Look at that mob. You should have heard him cheer when Francis Langford walked out and when Tony Romano played the guitar. Yes, sir, you'll never know how this bunch of boys picked up our morale. And again, the weather breaks over the continent and the handwriting on the wall spreads your story. You're into the third panel now. You've been out eight days in a row and done a double header over France on the ninth. This man's Air Force is piling it on. New combat wings have been added. New air divisions formed. So you're not very surprised when General Aker comes that day. Something big is up. He goes into the briefing room to confer with the old man and his staff. They call in the squadron commanders, even the flight commanders. What did he tell them? Your four squadron CEOs, they know, but don't talk. Just grin a little with excitement. It's something big, all right, because the bomb dumps have been getting plenty of heavy stuff lately. And a loading order came through this afternoon. Stand by. More than that, wing racks. We're really going to pile it on. As always, when you know a real dilly is coming up, you're a little restless. Out in the dispersals, you hear them winding up those engines. That's all right, ground crew. Make them sing. Make them sing good. Okay, man, let's go get this target and then we'll take the jab. Oh, hey, 